Wow, the field, you know, is changing at a rapid pace in um, RCC and uh, first in metastatic uh, renal cell cancer, kidney cancer. Uh, so we had for the past 10, 15 years targeted uh, agent, usually oral agent, uh, drugs that target the VEGF, the VEGF receptor and MDOR inhibitor. And the, for the past few years, immunotherapy um, came in renal cell uh, carcinoma with the introduction of uh, nivolumab in patients that progress on um, prior lines of treatment. And now there are several immune checkpoint blockers, mostly with PD-1 and PD-L1 inhibitor, but also to some degree with CTLA-4 inhibitor that making their ways in uh, kidney cancer in the advanced form, mostly actually through combination therapies, whether with an immuno-oncology drug and another one, or with a TKI. Cabozentinib is an interesting uh, drug. It's actually a tyrosine kinase inhibitor that is a potent VEGF receptor uh, inhibitor. But in addition to that, it does have some properties against other receptors such as METX and XL. And there's a preclinical evidence that these two uh, receptors or these two pathways, if you want, the MET and the XL pathways, could be involved in mechanism of resistance that happens at the beginning or after exposure to VEGF receptor blockade. Initially, cabozentinib showed activity in an early phase one trial in heavily pretreated patient and was taken to a second line setting in patient that progress on VEGF tyrosine kinase inhibitor. That was the Meteor study, a large, uh, well-powered phase three trial with primary endpoint progression-free survival against, at that time, a standard therapy, an oral mTOR inhibitor, uh, Everolimus, which was FDA approved itself in uh, 2009. And the study met its primary endpoint, and the progression-free survival was superior, almost double with cabozentinib compared to Everolimus. And in addition, the response rate were um, higher and statistically significant, and more important even, the secondary endpoint of overall survival was significant. So that led to the approval of um, uh, cabozentinib in the second or later line setting. Uh, having said so, and in parallel, there was a trial in untreated patient that are poor or intermediate risk by the IMDC uh, criteria, which is around 80%, 75 to 80% of all comers. Uh, that investigated the activity of cabozentinib, again, using progression-free survival as a primary endpoint, uh, versus sunitinib. Sunitinib has been a standard and most commonly and widely used VEGF tyrosine kinase inhibitor for the past 10 years. And uh, the study met its primary endpoint, though it was a small randomized phase two, but uh, it showed a progression-free survival advantage with cabozentinib over sunitinib, both clinically relevant, statistically significant. Then the authors went and did a central review of these scans because that study was run by Alliance. The primary endpoint was investigator review. And here we go again, there was a, a benefit, both um, statistically significant, clinically relevant, hazard ratio 0.48. The response rate also were higher with cabozentinib compared to sunitinib. Uh, the study was not powered for overall uh, survival, and uh, that actually secondary endpoint was not met. Uh, toxicities also were not different uh, between sunitinib and cabozentinib, although uh, there was no quality of life assessment. It's just comparing all grade and high grade toxicities. And this led to the approval, to, the, to a change of label, and the approval of cabozentinib in the frontline setting.